Soviet Union was seen as a country in catastrophe during the first year of the German invasion, otherwise known as the Great Patriotic War. Between the start of the invasion in June 1941 and the Soviet counteroffensive in winter of that same year, Red Army units were ferociously encircled and destroyed west of Minsk in Uman, south of Smolensk, east of Kiev, east of Smolensk, and east of Bryansk. These lessons of war also extended to surrounded Red Army units in Odessa, Tallinn, and Sevastopol. The Red Army was in a perilous situation by December 1941. However, strategic redeployments with the reserves located in the rear allowed the Soviet military to effectively dictate the terms of numerical advantage to the Wehrmacht. This also negated the Germans the ability to collect meaningful intelligence on future Soviet offensives, since they could not detect Soviet rear units. However, that being said, two years of fighting would pass before the Soviet war machine, coupled with Allied Lend-Lease, would perfect its offensive battle doctrine. This doctrine originated in the 1930s with Marshal Mikhail Tukhachevsky. The previous Russian Civil War wrecked havoc on the populace, with the Red Army fighting against the pro-Tsarist white movement. The scale of the war introduced the power of mobility to the young Red Army, and commanders like Marshal Semyon Budyoni saw the advantage of cavalry, especially in severe weather conditions. Tukhachevsky also saw the power of rail and cavalry in disrupting enemy military capabilities, and was so intrigued by the subject that he decided to dedicate his time to theoretical military approaches. By the 1930s, he had developed what was to be known as Deep Battle, a theoretical predecessor to Blitzkrieg that overwhelmingly relied on mechanized formations in an echelon-style offensive. Sadly for Tukhachevsky, he was executed during the Great Purge in 1937 and would not see the accomplishments of his theoretical battle plan. Although Blitzkrieg as a concept is similar, Deep Battle didn't place an emphasis on close air support. It also concentrated on rather different objectives than Blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg focused mainly on frontline operations and was tasked with encircling units and liquidating the resulting pockets. Such a victory would create a gap in the front line that could then be exploited, however it did little to focus on broader offensives. This is confirmed with the idea that Hitler initially placed great emphasis on simply encircling as many Red Army units as possible, without making an advance on Moscow as a strategic objective. It was only after the initial victories in the summer of 1941 where Hitler actually decided to advance on Moscow. Deep Battle had a much broader thought process than Blitzkrieg. It focused on broader offensives, simply because it had strategic ambitions and focused less on liquidating enemy pockets of resistance. The way Deep Battle worked was that there would be a somewhat static front line, where each side would be at an assumed stalemate. The side incorporating Deep Battle would create a mechanized formation in the rear section of its designated operational theater. This would demonstrate the echelon formation I was talking about earlier. When the initial attack was to finally commence in that operational theater, a slow advancing artillery barrage would provide a shield for advancing infantry in the first echelon, in order to push the defender to the secondary defensive positions. The infantry formations would continue to concentrate all their firepower on this emerging gap until a significant number of defenders started to retreat. When this happened, the mechanized formation to the rear would start to advance and push through the gap, therefore initiating this exploitation phase. However, problems arose regarding when to commit these mechanized formations. If committed too soon, they would wear down and lose their offensive edge. If committed too late, they risked losing the opportunity for exploitation, as enemy reserves could simply plug the hole in the gap. With strategic objectives in mind, like cities and industrial centers, the me mechanized formations would continue its deep exploitation, bypassing surrounded enemy units and disrupting the enemy's rear. This rear action would force the defenders to mount a strategic retreat along the entirety of the front, which would also facilitate other deep battle operations. This is the reason why actions like Operation Bagration in the summer of 1944 were done in a staggered progression, rather than in concert. The defenders would be so focused on containing strategic advan advances on one side that they would simply forget to screen for potential offensives elsewhere. And that's exactly what happened. Red Army Marshal Ivan Konev took advantage of the disorganization caused by Operation Bagration and commenced the Lvov Sandomirts offensive only a, we a few weeks later. This emphasis on deep exploitation projected Soviet military power nearly a thousand kilometers in less than half a year. 
The situation was starting to look eerily similar to 1941, but this time with the Germans on the losing side. As I mentioned earlier, many of these offensives would not have been able to advance so far without the assistance of Lend-Lease. Although the Lend-Lease program did not significantly contribute to the Soviet war economy in 1941 and 1942, it played a tremendous role in extending the logistical capabilities of the Red Army. Such advances would not have been possible without the addition of American trucks, jeeps, food rations, industrial equipment, and rail equipment. That being said, Germany had also reached its offensive limits beforehand. So what we could have seen in the Eastern Front would have been an increasingly static war that would have pressured both parties to come to a rather inconclusive agreement. From the rubble of near defeat and despair, the Red Army was able to master the art of strategic warfare and perfect battle exploitations with the utmost precision. And with that, it had militarily gone very far from those gloomy days of the summer of 1941. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I try to make content as frequently as possible, so please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in learning more about history, politics, philosophy, and a lot more other things.